Hi everybody and welcome to part B of exercise 5, or I, I'm sorry, example 5 on page 41. Okay, now the instructions to this are on the previous page, so let me remind you of those. They're giving us a linear transformation, this time from R3 to R2, and they'd like us to find a basis for the null space and the range, and then to find the rank and the nullity of this. Okay, so we're going to run through the same process that we did with part A. We're going to try to streamline it a little bit, though, because we learned some things when we, when we did exercise 5A. So if we start with the null space, remember that the null space is about asking um, what inputs, when substituted into this linear transformation, would give us the zero vector out. So it's like taking that output and setting it equal to the zero vector. That's going to result in a system of equations again, starting with x1 minus 2x3 is equal to 0, okay, which if we put in matrix form, that's going to be 1x1 plus 0x2 minus 2x3 is equal to 0. Okay, and then looking at the second part, x1 plus x2, that's 1x1 plus 1x2 plus 0x3 equals 0. And the null space would be the set of all solutions to that system of equations. Okay, so we do row operations on that. And if you do, here's what you're going to come up with. 0, 1, 2. Okay, and then we pick out our pivot columns. We've got a pivot position there and there. So notice that we just have one free variable. x3 is free. Okay, so we will give that a name. Let x3 be t. And now that we've nailed down that free variable, we can try to figure out what the other two variables are, x1 and x2. Okay, so going back to our system, the second equation looks like x2 plus 2x3 equals 0. If we take that and solve it for x2, we're going to get, let's see, x2 equals negative 2x3, which we now know is negative 2t because of the fact that x3 is t. Okay, and then finally back up to the first equation, that looks like x1 minus 2x3 equals 0. If we take that equation and solve it for x1, we're going to just add the x3, 2x3 to both sides. Okay, and that's going to give us 2t. Okay, and therefore, the null space of t is going to look like the set of all things that have the form x1, 2t, x2, negative 2t, and x3, t, where t is in r. Okay, and notice that that set is just the span of the single vector 2, negative 2, 1. Okay, if we factor the t out of there, we get that. Whoops. Okay, like that. All right. And so we, we can look at that calculation and notice that we only need one vector to get a basis for the null space of t. We just need this. And based on the kind of simplifying observations that we made in the last example, I claim that we're ready to actually give our answers here. We don't need to do a whole lot more work here. So the basis for our null space is just going to be the single vector set that contains 2, negative 2, and 1. That was our calculation above. Basis for n of t. I'm going to kind of use that, adopt this notation. When I write beta of n, I mean basis for the null space. And what would the nullity be? Well, the nullity is just the dimension of the null space. We found a basis. It only has one vector in it, so the nullity of t is equal to 1. Okay, what about a basis for the range? Okay, well, in the last example, we discovered that we can find a basis for the range by just going back to our matrix and picking out the, the pivot columns. Okay, so we've got pivots in the first and the second column. That means that these two vectors should be enough to give us a basis okay, for the range. So we're going to get 1, 1, and 0, 1. That's our basis for R of t. And the rank, that's just the dimension of the range. We know that that's 2 because of the fact that there are two vectors in that, in that basis. Okay, and there's our answer.